Well, good morning, and it is Wednesday morning. It is the last day of November of 2022. Boy, how quickly the time has gone by, right? We're going to be looking today at John 7, verses 25 through 31, a continuing conversation that Jesus has. And the reason for the backgrounds that I've got up there uh, is I'm kind of going to ask you to get a feel for what Jesus was going through. And I've kind of blocked uh, the person portraying Jesus there. Obviously, it's not a real-life photo of Jesus, right? So uh, anyway, uh, just glad to have you with me this morning, and just uh, hope that you will uh, enjoy uh, this one today. We're going to be looking again at John 7, 25 through 31. And I want you to just really think for a moment or two, what it was it like during this conversation that Jesus was having with the crowd around him? You know, what were the what was it like with all that tension there? Right. And all the the, the noise and all the other stuff that was going on. What was that like uh, for Jesus? What was it like for the disciples who are here watching all of this going on? And, uh, you know, if we can kind of get a sense of it. Right. Uh, it helps us to uh, to make it a little bit more uh, realistic for us, maybe instead of just reading it in an account. Uh, if we could kind of smell the smells, as it were, and, and hear the sounds. Uh, of what was going on there. So we're going to use this as a backdrop for it. Good morning, Doreen, and to all the others that are joining us this morning. Glad to have you with us. And for those that will join in this later on at the end of the day or whatever time you get, I know some have mentioned that uh, they can't watch it during the live uh, filming of it because they are uh, working and stuff like that. So, but whatever time you're coming, we really appreciate you joining us in our conversation. So again, we're going to be looking at John 7, 25 through 31. We're going to be using the English Standard Version. And starting at verse 25, we have these wonderful words right here. I don't know what just went on there, but we're going to figure it out here in just a second. So just bear with me. I'll tell you, just put a rookie in charge of things, right? So give me one second here. Here we go. Now we're on. All right. Okay. Uh, so John 7, 25 through 31 using the ESV version. Some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, is not this the man whom they seek to kill? And here he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? But we know where this man comes from, and when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed as he taught in the temple, you know me, and you know where I come from. But I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. Yet many of the people believed in him. They said, when the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man has done? So far the word of our Lord. Well, again, right, here's our situation. Jesus is there. He's teaching. He's at the festival of booths. Uh, he has uh, kind of listened to his brothers in a sense, right, because they urged him to go up. But he went up privately. He went up when it was the right time for him. And uh, we're going to look at that later on when it talks about, you know, the time has not yet come uh, when they try to arrest Jesus. But what's going on here, right? They seem to be in a debate with Jesus, who himself is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, he is uh, uh, proclaiming what is true. And, and we got all these armchair theologians, right, sitting around here. They have been taught uh, by the Pharisees to some degree. They, the Pharisees are rejecting Jesus. But now they're kind of chiding them a little bit. You know, is not this the man whom they seek to kill, right? Why aren't they arresting him? Why are they letting him out here? And then they kind of, they taunt a little bit with, well, maybe they discovered that he really is the Messiah. But then they also chime in again with their own theology that, well, when the Messiah comes, nobody will know where he's from. And, and yet we know where this man is from. Right. And again, they're referring to Nazareth. They're not remembering that he was born in Bethlehem, as the prophecy had foretold. And so when we think about these kind of things, right, um, you know, all the scripture pointed to Jesus coming and and everybody had their own little thoughts about what that meant. And, and they were looking for their own little signs. And yet here's Jesus right in front of them. And he's wanting to make sure that they know that he is the Messiah. Now, he's not doing it in a way that incites the crowd to uh, to, to uh, come up and kill him. And yet he at the same time, he's not going to withhold the truth. 
And he does acknowledge, yeah, you kind of know me. You know the physical human side of me. But you've got no idea who I am. You don't understand that I am the Savior that God the Father has sent into this world. And there's another scripture verse from Matthew uh, 25, 15, that talks about the Pharisees, excuse me, 23, 15, that talks about the uh, Pharisees, right? That they, they turn people into people that are twice as fit for hell when they get done with them. You know, they don't, uh, they don't proclaim the truth of God's word, but they teach with such authority and with such conviction and they hold such power that people believe them. And, and we see that happen in our world today, too. The truth of Jesus is known, and yet some church bodies try to, 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 to disguise that. They try to, to change it. Uh, they say, yeah, you can believe in Jesus, but you've got to do this or you can't do that. Uh, and they turn the life of a Christian into one of law instead of one of grace and the gospel message, the forgiveness of sins that we have through the blood of Christ shed for us. And so they lead people astray. And these people become more and more uh, determined and, and they, they build their, their, their trust in, in those false teachings that when the truth comes, they, they can't hear it. They can't handle it. They reject it because it just it cuts to the core of who they are and who they believe they are with what they have learned over time. And so Jesus is right here in the midst of this crowd. He is right here and he's sharing with them who he is and he wants them to know the truth. He wants him to understand that he is the Messiah, that he has come to die for them. You know, when I look at this picture and I see this time, I'm reminded of another section of scripture from the 22nd Psalm, uh, 11 through 13. And it talks about uh, Jesus being surrounded. And he's talking, this is the writer of the Psalm, but it's, it's, it's about Jesus when he's being crucified. But it talks about his enemies surrounding him. And as I was studying this, it, it dawned on me that, you know, it wasn't just when Jesus was on the cross that he was surrounded by enemies. There was so many times in his life when the enemies of God surrounded him, thinking that they were followers of the one true God and that Jesus was somehow uh, mistaken or was blasphemous, right? That Jesus was going the wrong way. And yet Jesus is standing there so clearly telling them, that, no, you're going the wrong way. In other words, you're believing in the wrong things. You're not trusting in me whom God has sent. And of course, you can imagine that when he says things like, well, you don't know the one true God as I do, uh, that that would, again, would just incite that crowd. But it's the truth. If we don't know who Jesus Christ is, if we don't understand that the Father sent him, no matter who we think we're worshiping, we're not worshiping the true God. If Christ isn't at the center of it, if we don't see that and understand that, we are lost. You know, anybody that does not trust in Christ cannot honor the Father. And it's as simple as that. It's nothing, it's not complicated. You know, there's so many false idols and gods in the world that people have developed of their own and they want to believe in them and trust in them. But Jesus stands there in direct opposition to them. But that direct opposition is not to taunt them and to be destructive to them, but that they can hear the truth and that the Holy Spirit can take that truth and turn them around. And that they can come to the knowledge of salvation. You see, that is the wonderful thing that God is doing, even in the midst of this situation that we're, we're reading about right here and that we're taking a look at. Right. Jesus is here and he's here because he wants to set the record straight of who he is. And again, these people, they're taking up the, the mantra of the uh, Pharisees and, and they're challenging Christ. And again, they don't have their own specific biblical knowledge, some of what they've heard and stuff like that and has been passed on down to them. And they're, so they're erroneous in, in their understanding of it. And we see that happen many times in the scriptures. There's many times when somebody will make a statement that certain things are true or aren't true. And, and yet when you go and look at them, in the scriptures, you find out that they, the, the people speaking, even if the Pharisees didn't have a clue, they thought that they knew them. Uh, there's another place where Jesus will say, you study the scriptures and you think you have life in them, but these are the very words that testify about me. And so here, again, the, the point, right, that they, the people that are there studying and all this other stuff with all this knowledge, don't have the truth. And again, Jesus comes to them and wants them to understand 
and to be saved. He wants them to move from death to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. But again, these people are so ingrained in their understanding of the false doctrines, and they just hold on to them so tightly that they become incensed and angry whenever the truth is spoken. You know, we sometimes wonder how that can be. But as I said earlier, there's a lot of denominations around the world that have done that very thing. They've taken some scriptures and twisted it. They've taken uh, the various things and, and made it man's word instead of God's word. And then when that happens, guess what? There is just a resistance against the truth. Uh, people are, you know, are killed for speaking the truth sometimes. Even today in the world, people are, are dying uh, in uh, as they proclaim the gospel, as they live out that wonderful, wonderful message that Jesus Christ is there. I want to move just a little bit further down into our text right here, too, because he says, um, I know him, for I come from him, this is verse 29, and he sent me. And again, going back to the fact that Jesus is not here as some rogue savior, right? That God the Father sent him. So he comes in that authority. He comes with the truth of God, and he's proclaiming that. And it says, so they are seek, They were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. And again, that's verse 30, right? So the hour of his arrest has not come. And until that time comes, guess what? Man is powerless. It's not going to happen until it is the exact right time. So that when everything goes through all of its uh, procedures and things like that, that Jesus will be nailed to the cross at just the right time. He came into this world born of a virgin at just the right time. He started his ministry at just the right time. He will be there to be arrested and to go through all of the things of, of uh, Maundy Thursday and uh, Good Friday at just the right time. And guess what? On the third day, at just the right time, Jesus will be raised to life victorious over sin, Satan, the devil, and the world, and our flesh, and everything that stands against God and his truth, bringing salvation to you and to me. And verse 31 says, yet many of the people believed in him, right? And they asked the question, when the Messiah comes, will he do more miracles than this person has done, right? Than, than Jesus himself has done. Now, we don't know the sincerity of that faith and the depth of it. Is it the in the sowing of the seed? Is it maybe a little bit like, uh, you know, that, that grabs uh, just a little bit and it sprouts up quickly? But as soon as uh, any kind of uh, persecution comes, it withers and dies. We really don't know. But the point is, is that guess what? Some of the people are believing in Jesus. Again, the power of the Holy Spirit working in the lives of those that are there. And he still continues to work to this day bringing people to faith in Jesus Christ. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for we've entered into the Advent season. And we thank you, Lord, that we celebrate not only the first coming, but we also anticipate when you will come again, Lord Jesus, for that final time. When you will take us to be with you and all of sin will be eliminated for all eternity. And we will live with you in blessed peace and joy and be with you to worship you, to praise you, to serve you, to love you, and to adore you. And you certainly are worthy of all of those things, Lord. You are great and kind and compassionate. May we live by faith, trusting that the work you did for us, Lord Jesus, upon the cross was for us and for all people, that we may share that gospel message. And by your Spirit's power, more and more people will come to believe in him, moving from death to life, having their names written in the book of eternal life by your grace and mercy. We humbly pray these things in Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen. Well, thank you again for allowing me to spend some time with you today. And uh, Doreen and Crin and Colleen, so good to see you. And any of the others that have joined us or will join us later on. Uh, I know I've seen several people up here that are decorating the church who would normally join us online here too. So just really good to have everybody here. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and we will see you later. Take care.